Hi, art class. It's Miss Hannah again. Uh, so today we are going to talk about uh, Egyptian design. And uh, in your reading, you would have learned about different things that they would have designed, like uh, the inside of tombs, objects, necklaces, jewelry was really important. Um, and you would have heard that uh, gold was a good feature in a lot of their work, um, as well as hieroglyphs, meaning certain things. Uh, so a hieroglyph would usually stand for a word. Um, or sometimes it would stand for individual kind of ideas or letters. So let's go ahead and see if I can share this with you. Here it is. This is this week's studio right here. And they just suggest that you use um, paints or paper or crayons, sketchbook. So I have here just a piece of paper and I'm going to sketch out what I'm gonna do, but I also wanted to encourage you if you made something like a bowl or a base or something out of clay, um, you could also decorate that with Egyptian design so that you could make your um, clay object into your Egyptian ob object, okay? So here I have my little vase that's dry now, right? And you'll notice these kind of wonky little curves on it. Part of that is because of the planter that I'm using. It has a wide mouth on it. And so I want it to be able to sit in there without falling through. The other part is that I was gonna do snakes on here because um, you see a lot of snakes in Egyptian designs and a lot of their words. Um, and so I was going to do snakes around here and make these turn into snakes. So I'm going to paint this as my Egyptian object. But if you notice here, it says, <clears throat> you can just draw an object from your daily life on drawing paper and use colors and shapes and make it as lifelike as you can. And then you could add the details from it, like the um, hieroglyphs, the cartouches, the animals, the people um, to make it look like it was um, Egyptian in design, okay? Or you could just draw an Egyptian design for some sort of object like um, a tiara or a brooch or some sort of jewelry um, or a vase or something, okay? Um, you can use colored pencils, crayons, watercolor, whatever you have. But just remember that a lot of the colors from those pieces of work the art that we saw were very bold, um, very dark colors. So bright colors of like, um, could stand for precious stones like jade or ruby. And they could do a lot of gold. Um, you can use yellow if you don't have gold. Um, maybe add a little bit of just a tiny little, tiny little brown to it. That'll make a golder color. Um, uh, so anyway, do what you feel is best for your own design. It's completely up to you, but you can also, like I said, kind of combine the two projects together if you want to, which is what I'm going to do. So I drew out here, see that? Yeah, I drew out my vase or the shape of my vase here. And um, once I figure out where I put my pencil, here it is. Okay. I am going to kind of think of what do I want my vase to represent? And I really like these symbols that they have on this page here. They have creation, rebirth, rebirth, protection, and healing. <clears throat> and I'm a big plant person, right? So my idea was to kind of do like an Egyptian animal design with the snakes intertwined. So you see these little loops that kind of go around my vase to hold it into place in my planter. I think I'm going to turn those into snake heads. So it's going to be like a snake hugging its own body, in other words. Um, kind of 
like that. See, so here's his little head. And then I will do like two little snake little eyes on the side, maybe a snake fork tongue right here. And then maybe even like a little pattern on his back to represent that he is a snake. Maybe I'll look up online and look at different snakes that I think are pretty. So I do think snakes are pretty, but maybe I'll look up and do some research and decide what kind of snake I want on there. Maybe there are certain kinds of snakes in Egypt that I could represent, but you see that? Let's look. Yeah. So you can see him up there curled around my pot, right? So I turned that wavery line into a snake. And the one below him then can be maybe facing the other way, like two little snakes protecting my pot, right? I like that idea of cute little snakes protecting my pot. Not everyone thinks snakes are cute, but I like most animals. I don't have a problem with snakes. They eat mice and rats, and that's nice because otherwise they would eat your grain in your house. So I'm just going to um, design that real quick. It's not nothing too fancy yet because I'm not painting it yet. Just kind of just wanted to show you. So the two snakes facing the opposite ways. Okay, so once I have that, I have to decide, okay, on my thing, I have these other filler areas right here and down here. Um, what do I want to put on there? And like I said, I really like some of these little symbols. I, I particularly like the idea of putting them on a, hey guys, you're being a little loud. Thank you. Um, I particularly like the idea of putting them on my pot where I grow my plants because then your plant could be used for something. For instance, I could put protection or healing right or i could put um, creation because you're creating a plant um, or life because uh you're giving life to a plant um, i really like this protection one like some some herbs and things like that are are known to be protection plants and so let's say i specifically use this pot to grow one of those herbs that's supposed to be a protective plant i'm not very good at that i don't know which ones are for which but i could look it up so maybe I want to go with the snake theme and put this guy on my pot. So I'll do that just for instance, because I think he's cool. I don't know if I'm going to be able to draw it the way it is on there, but we'll give it a go. Just real. And because I'm this sketch isn't my final thing, I'm only doing it kind of quickly. But if this is your final thing, take your time, do a good job. Um, make sure you're happy with the outcome and that you work to make it as good as you possibly can if you're going to do it. See, I'm going to move that thing so that I can see what he looks like. Mine does not look like that right now because I'm kind of doing it too fast, but that's okay. And then it looks like he has a little, psh, psh. I like to make sound effects when I do it. There's no good reason for it. Okay. All right. So I didn't do it exactly like that, but I have my snake down there. I don't know if you can see him for protection. And probably I would do more than one symbol because I would want to encourage maybe the life to grow. So I could do the life symbol right here, right? Um, and maybe I'll do the life symbol on the top just to show you. But you could just do it around the entire one. So you can choose a couple different to promote life. Maybe I'll do life symbols on the top. And to promote protection, maybe I'll do protection symbols on the bottom. Right? Um, and then maybe on the back, I would put creation or rebirth. So rebirth on there um, in creation. So maybe just have a couple symbols going around. So that's the idea. Um, you can't see it very well because this is paper, but um, 
the other idea is that you you should think about what kind of rich colors you're going to use. Turquoise was big. Um, I might give my snakes kind of a green turquoise look. Dark greens were big as well. I think my pot itself will be painted sort of a golden yellow color. Um, if I can get like, a, I might even have a gold paint. I'll have to look. I think that'll be pretty. And then you see my snakes, get them up as close. They have little diamonds on their back. Maybe I like I could get those like kind of pretend gems, right? And put those on there, pretend that I have precious stones on there. That would be another really fun thing that you could do to make it look a little bit more Egyptian. Probably what I will do is I'll just paint red, uh, a dark red color on there and then maybe put a little white on there so it looks like it's shining like a gem. And then the protection symbols themselves, right down there, right here. Um, if I paint the... Okay, sure, it's fine. If you if I paint it gold, then I'll probably do the protection symbols like a turquoise um, or a dark bluish color, or I could paint it blue and do the symbols gold. So I'll just have to kind of play with it. I have um, a bag here, and all of this stuff has. I just have a whole bunch of stuff in here, like markers and crayon. Hey. So can you take the dogs with you if you go? Thank you. So maybe I'll try red on the back of my guys. That'll stand for gems. So I'll get that out. That's my red marker. Uh, let's see. I think I am going to go with sort of a turquoise blue for I'm trying to think if I want to do it for the pot or for the protection symbols. The pot and then i'll do gold which will be represented as yellow um sorry my kids are being kind of noisy so i'll do gold for the actual symbols and then for the snakes i think i will do kind of um a vibrant green probably with a little turquoise in them we'll see how it goes i really have to see what i have but That'll, that'll decide it for me. I might not have a lot, so. I have paints and that's what I'm actually gonna do. I'm gonna do acrylics for my pot and they might chip. Last week, um, one of ours, one of the students showed us his pot and his mom actually molded the color into the pot itself, which is a brilliant idea for clay because when I paint my clay, if I don't mix it with clay itself, which I might actually do, I might just make colored clays, which is kind of what you paint on pottery. If you've ever gone to a pottery shop, um, if you don't do that, it can chip after time because the paint kind of so forms sort of a skin. Um, and so it was smart of his mom to add the color first. I didn't really think about it. And I didn't know if this clay from the bank would work. Cause remember I got my clay from the bank um, by our house. So it was just a guess <laughs> um, and it did work. It worked really well. Uh, my clay pot looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna show you here since it's a bigger screen, try to get the light on it. There we go. So that's like a kind of a basic design. Now, like I said, you can spend more time on yours and make it how you want, especially because this isn't gonna be my final design. I'm actually gonna paint mine on. So mine doesn't have to be as fancy on the paper because my actual design is gonna go on my pot. And I will hope, I hope to show it to you. I hope to get it painted by Friday, but if not by this Friday, Sometimes Miss Hannah gets busy with work. Um, I will show it the following Friday because sometimes I don't show you my end products. And that's not because I don't like them. It's mostly because I don't finish them, which is naughty for a teacher to say, but I don't because I just got tons and tons of people asking me to do stuff during the week, including my little kids. So that is the reason for that. So I am actually doing sort of the... It's kind of a turquoise blue. It's the only tur it's the only one that's close to that. Though when I use my paints, I'm going to combine green and blue. So um, if you want a turquoise 
and you don't have one and you're using paints, you can kind of play with it by adding different shades of um, blue and green together and seeing how it works. Now it needs to be, for turquoise, it needs to be a little bit more blue than it is green. So just remember that you'll have more blue than green. And there's some colors that if you mix them together, they just look muddy. So you just had, kind of have to give it a go. I would do it on cardboard first so that you know what you're looking for. Okay, so I'll show you what it looks like so far, the design itself. I haven't really um, colored much. So if I were gonna do my pot in turquoise, for instance, okay? So that would be the turquoise pot. And then let's say I wanna do my symbols in gold. Right now I only have yellow, which is gonna have to do, because I think I only have yellow paint too. And again, I'll probably add a little, um, either orange or maybe a little brown to my paint to see if I can make a gold. So let's say I do my symbols in gold. Then I just have my snakes left and my snakes will probably have different colors in them. The snakes aren't just one color, but I think I'm gonna pretend on my snakes that they have jewels embedded in them. Like you would see on, um, on some of the, like you saw some of the, the stuff that had jewels encrusted on them. Um, they, they like to use precious gems and stuff like that. So I think I'll try to do rubies. I don't know if rubies would have been Egyptian or not. I didn't look into it, but I'll have to look that up. That's another thing you can do. You can research which jewels should you put on there, right? So it's gonna be green. Um, and I, I'll probably do a varying shade of green. This is just the green I found in my thing. Probably a darker one. You could also do black snakes. You could do gold snakes. Gold snakes might look cool. I might change my mind if I like the gold that I make and uh, make them kind of golden magical looking snakes that wrap my base instead of realistic looking snakes because it would just look neat. And with the gems on them anyway, it would kind of fit the theme. And I'm just kind of playing with it, guys. So nothing's wrong. I mean, if you don't like it, if you don't like your design, start again. Um, not the end of the world. That's the thing about art. You know, no one's, there's no right way to do it. You just find a better way through play, you know. Okay, and then I'll do this for the gems. What I really need is I need one of those projectors, guys, so you can see what my hands are doing. It would be way more interesting for you if that were the case, so that you're just not looking at the top of my head when I do it. But just imagine that I have one of those fancy projector screens and you can see that I am coloring my gems bright red. And the reason I chose a marker instead of a crayon for this one is because they are gems and gems would stick out, right? So they'd be very vibrant. Um, so that's what this looks like right now. I can tell just from looking at it that I might not paint it turquoise. I think what I want to try to do is paint it I don't know, I think I'd paint it turquoise if I made the snakes gold. I think that would be cool. And another combination that I think would look really neat and fairly Egyptian compared to like what those other ones look like is maybe kind of a dark red, like a brick red, this for this, and then gold for this and this. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of maybe sketch out a couple different things and think, does that one look more Egyptian or less Egyptian? I'll probably put more symbols all the way around on the other sides. Maybe this, like I said, the symbol for rebirth um, and the symbol for creation. Uh, and I think this looks fairly, sorry, you're looking at the sun, fairly uh, good. Like I could do that with paints and it would probably look fine but I'm not sure this is the combination I want, which is good to sketch things out first, especially if you're going to paint on your beautiful clay objects that you made, if you made them. Um, like one of our friends actually showed us 
that he actually already had a turquoise coil basket um, pottery. So potentially that is a very Egyptian looking color that he found actually. Potentially he could just do symbols around the outside of that um, using paint or marker uh, and it would look really cool. So he thought ahead. If I'd have thought ahead, I would have added paint to my clay as well um, because I think it would have given it a more natural look, but that's okay. I think it looks fine now. So really not too difficult, right? Um, maybe you want to tell a story on your thing. So instead of symbols, maybe you want to tell like a story of a ruler or a story from your life. So you would kind of, I don't know if you recognize or remember how the Egyptian people looked on there. I don't, I would have to look, but something like this. Obviously you wouldn't be wearing, you're not gonna know this joke until I show it to you, but you wouldn't be wearing no shirt and a loincloth, but you know, like an Egyptian like person. And if you wanted to make it more modern, I'm changing it as we speak to put clothes on it. <laughs> and a ball cap. right? An Egyptian person like on the side, that kind of two-dimensional looking person, but wearing a cap and long shorts and a t-shirt rather than, you know, just the, the bare minimum with the, the covering for the bottom area, which is what you see in a lot of those pictures for the men and the women wear sort of a dressy um, kind of shoulder thing a lot in those pictures that we saw from the, from the ancient Egypt dress. So you could wear something more modern too as a woman on there. So um, you could do pictures. You could show, tell a picture, from, a story from your life on your artifact that you're making. Um, and a lot of times those were stories that were, that were on those things. Most of the time there were stories talking about gods, uh, talking about big life events talking about big rulers and uh, wars and battles and achievements that they had. So that's something you could do is look at those figures um, from those pieces of art. Let me see if I can share my screen real quick and show you what I mean. Uh, just regular screen, share, okay. You're going to stare at my face for a minute here while I search for it. So, ancient Egyptian art. Okay. Here we go. Get some images here so they can kind of give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. Okay. So this one here, for instance, guys, you see the very two-dimensional figures um, where you they're kind of flat on there. This is telling a story. These people here with these, uh, these heads are, are lesser gods, I believe. And then this is, um, I believe, a pharaoh. And then you see the woman behind him. Um, so this is telling a story and I don't know what that story is because I can't read these symbols, but you can see that there are symbols in the background in their story too, talking about maybe giving names, maybe giving dates. Again, I'm not a hundred percent on that, but it talks about what's going on in it and, and, um, people studied that and figured it out, um, that this means this, this symbol means this, uh, and, also, I was going to show you this one, which we saw in our, this is one of the things that we saw. This is the mask of Tutankhamun. Um, and as you can see, it has that beautiful dark blue right here. And it has this light turquoise and this kind of rusty burnt red, which is what I'm thinking I'm going to do my basin. And then this, most of it is gold. You see a lot of coal over the eyes here and very prominent 
face piece for the beard, um, the wrap for the beard. Just gorgeous, truly magnificent art. Um, and so very colorful, very rich in decoration. Um, so that's what they want you to think about when you think Egyptian art. Um, and so jewelry was big. You did see a couple things, um, a couple pieces of jewelry too, I believe. And there was oftentimes um, golds. Saw some scone, stone sculpture probably. Here's um, some ancient Egyptian from the Metropolitan Art Museum. Okay, so look here, you have the symbol for life. We know that one because we just looked at it and that's one that Miss Hannah was gonna put on her thing. We have this um, kind of scarab beetle here and it's, it's a metal, silver I believe, carved with figures inside it. And then again, our two-dimensional carved stone and then our painted type screen work and our stone carved here as well and gold uh, carving right here. So let me stop share. There we go. So be creative. Um, think of what you want to represent on your art. Uh, and of course you can just draw it if you don't want to put it on your clay pot or a figure, or if you don't want to make like a necklace out of something, of course you should just draw it and um, do the best you can. But think bold, uh, really vibrant colors. Uh, and definitely think, take a look at that stuff and, and research before you do yours because um, it gives you kind of a sense for, for what it would have looked like. And I hope you have fun. And I hope you show us what you make, if not this week, next week. Remember, you can always show us things you make, even if it's a different week and we're on to something else. That's fine. All right. I hope to see you guys make some beautiful art. Have a great week.